We yeah. got you. And, he, and here's the reason why. Let's take a look at uh, Coach Moore's resume, which is absolutely incredible. He has this head coaching experience twice. He's been head coach, the head coach in the National Football League. He was hired by the Atlanta Falcons in 2004. And in his first year in Atlanta, the Falcons went 11-5 and five and advanced to the NFC Championship game. After spending three years in Atlanta, he uh, joined the Seattle Seahawks coaching staff and became the team's head coach in 2009. And, Coach, it was one other thing that, uh, that really got my attention in listening to you uh, on the telephone and at your press conference, you said, and I'm paraphrasing now, UCLA is like a diamond in the rough. Sleeping giant. Sleeping giant, yeah. It's what did you mean giant. by that? Well, I just think, well, well, all the things I talked about earlier, I mean, that the university has to offer. I mean, it's an amazing place. But there's so many great football players, so many great athletes in this area here. And uh, if we can just get our share, you know, we can be a really good football team. And that's what we're doing. You know, we're going to hire really fine coaches that know how to teach, they know how to motivate, they know how to mentor, they know how to recruit. We're going to send them out on the road and we're going to try to bring in players that love to compete, that are tough, hard-nosed, physical players that, you know, care about winning, want to get a great education, be members of our community. And we're going to put those two forces together and try to win a lot of games. That's something and, cool, John. Well, well and, and it's all hyperbole yeah. right now. It's, it's talk, you yeah. know, I'm excited about it. and. Uh, and it's, you know, looking down the road, but that's, that's the goal. That's the objective. Jim, we, and, and to let you guys in on something, you know, while we were waiting to come on, we were waiting for those college games to end, Jim was on the phone talking to recruits. I think your phone's probably been attached to your ear for the better part of the last few <laughs> days. Yeah. What do kids these days, it's different, and, and for those who don't know, Jim played at the University of Washington. You were recruited. Um, what do kids ask you? What do kids in 2011 ask you more than anything else? You know what? The questions are wide-ranging. I spent yesterday on the road in, in the homes and at the schools of recruits. It was my actually my first day out, you know, doing home visits, and uh, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And each kid and each family was different, you know. I would say if there was a common theme, though, it was, you know, how are you going to take care of my kid? What kind of education is my child going to get? That was from the parents. Uh, from the from the players, it was you know what kind of system are you going to run? You know. Do you know the uh, answer to that, by the way, yet? Yeah, I am. Oh, are you I, running I, a spread? I mean, I, I, there is no name okay. for what we're going to do. I think that if you start to name your offense, then you pigeonhole yourself. We're right. multiple. Okay, we're going to do the things offensively that accentuate the attributes of our players. We're going to put them in positions yeah. to make yeah. plays, and we're going to have versatility, and we'll be m multiple enough that. Hey, look, I, I think this. You have to throw the ball to score points, but you have to run the football to win. You have to run the football to have toughness. And here's one other thing. We've, we're going to talk to Coach in another segment about the team, but the one thing that I know, because every player thinks they can go to the next level. Absolutely. And you having been there and done that, that should make your position with them even more solid, and they should believe in you even more so. You know, that was, you asked me what questions they were asking. Every kid that you talk to, you know, when they're in high school, that is a recruited athlete believes that they can play at the next level and I think what I have to offer to those kids is like you said Jim 25 years in the NFL and I've coached some of the greatest players of all time you know I was with Dan Fouts when I was young I've been around Joe Montana Ronnie Lott I've coached Tim McDonald Rod Woodson Merton Hanks Tim McDonald Kevin Green Kenny Norton Chris Dolman Sam Mills you, you know I mean I can keep going and going so a lot of great ones, a lot of Hall of Famers, Charlie Joyner. Um, and so I think what these kids see in me is they say, okay, this is a guy that if I go play for him, all right, he knows exactly what it takes right, show me to the make way. it in the NFL. Yeah. Now, a kid has to have the tools, they have to have the physical, at physical attributes, they have to be willing to work, but we're going to give them the ability to be, come out of college as a polished product, mm -hmm. a guy that's NFL ready, if they're willing to do the work and they have the skill level. Where you know, in the NFL, there's when you're when you're uh, talking about players that you're looking at to, in your scouting. There's some that are raw, and there's some that are polished. They both got the same amount of ability, but the raw guys need to get where the polished guys are in terms of technique and how to study and how to learn the game. And our guys, when they get ready to go to the NFL, they're going to be polished. Look at his eyes. You can tell how excited well, he is already. <laughs> your, yeah, your your dad told me a story once about a guy he coached, Sam Mills, down in New Orleans, oh, who yeah. wasn't recruited, wasn't no. the best player on his team. Mm -hmm. but he Matter, had heart. Right, and landed up making more tackles than anybody. And oh, I, I, I think that you hit the nail on the head, Jim. You played in the NFL. You know mm -hmm. that every kid 
who, who you, you want to come play for you sure. has that aspiration. And Jim, I, I'm right. guessing you, you want that, right? You want a kid Absolutely. who thinks big. Well, we, we want those. We want kids that want balance. You know, we don't want a bunch of kids coming to UCLA that only want to be football players. And we don't want a bunch of kids coming that only want to be students. We want guys that want to excel in both areas and want to excel later in life and be, like I said, members of this community, contributing members of this, of this community that stay in the community. But, yeah, I want guys that love to compete okay that they die to win man every day they got to win no matter what it's doing they got to win whether it's getting the best grades or winning in tiddlywinks or winning on the football they got to win and they That's love to about. compete okay oh, you're me excited. and they I love there's no way I'm going back yeah. when things are hard mm -hmm. they're at their best those are the kind of guys that we want at UCLA and that's the kind of guys we're going to go find and we're going to talk more with head coach Jim Moore of the U this is a proud institution. Uh, it's an outstanding academic institution. I say that it's a sleeping giant in college football. All right, here's a look at what Coach Moore is talking about, a sleeping giant. Here's a look at some of the key players that could be back in a UCLA uniform next season. The quarterback position is always in the spotlight, and Coach Moore will have his choice of three players, Kevin Prince, Richard Bray, who have plenty of experience as a starter. But there is some hope for redshirt freshman uh, Brett Hundley will be a star in Westwood, and Jonathan Franklin will be another with another solid year out of the backfield but he is contemplating going to the NFL next season. Welcome back to our program. I'm Jim Hill along with John Ireland and UCLA head football coach uh, Jim Moore. But, you know, it's kind of amazing when you, when you think about all of these wonderful things that, that you're going through. But before we go to that, you guys should let these guys are like <laughs> brothers. They were born in the same hospital. Well, it's a big hospital, Jim. St. St. John's in Santa Monica but, but, is still, but still. Still, giving, still giving birth <laughs> to a lot of babies. Hey, you know, we were looking at that list, Jim, and I'm wondering how well do you know, I, you know, from the time you got the job, you've been recruiting. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to sit down with any of the current players for more than a few minutes? No, I, yeah, I wouldn't not. think so. No, I met with the team on Tuesday. Uh, we had a team meeting and it lasted about 15 or 20 minutes and I told them I was looking forward to meeting them all individually. But I think what's important right now for those players is that they focus on the bowl game. Right. I mean, this is a great opportunity to, for them to go out on a, on a positive note. The coaches that are coaching them deserve that. They don't need any other distractions other than that are already there because of what's transpired. And so I'm trying to stay out of the way. Um, I've been to practice twice, but I haven't been anywhere near where you know, I would get in the way, and uh, you know, I want those guys, and especially those seniors, to to have a great experience this last, you know, couple what ten days of their college football career. But aren't you just chomping at the bit here to get into <laughs> yeah. those meetings and you get on the practice yeah. field and get this thing turned around? I absolutely, I'm chomping at the bit, you know, and uh, but I, I have to pull back and give those guys their respect, and uh, they've earned that. And uh, I'm in the office every day. And, uh, and we're working hard and recruiting, and like I said, and coaches. And then after the bowl game, then I'll assume control of the football team. But yeah, I'm excited to work with those guys. I'm excited to get to know them better. I don't know a lot about them. I don't know, I've watched them on TV. I'm starting to watch tape, so I don't know necessarily the skill level. So it'll be fun just to, to dig in and find out exactly what we have and exactly what we need. What's your attitude about the USC-UCLA rivalry? Obviously, I mean, people like to say, well, all the games count the same. It's just another game. I can tell you it's not. No, you, it's you've not. probably figured that out already. But is it something you're openly going to talk about year-round? Is it something you're not going to put more emphasis on than another game? Or how do you feel about the crosstown well, rival? You know, I mean, every team has its rival game. You know, when I played at the University of Washington, it was Oregon. Uh, even though Washington State likes to think it was Washington State, <laughs> it was Oregon, you know. Uh, USC and UCLA is a huge rivalry in college football. I think, though, that you make a mistake as a, as a coach, not as a fan. I think the height that the fans bring to it and, you know, this city being Bruin or being Trojan, I think that's great for all of us. But as a coach, what you want your football team to do is concentrate on the game that they're getting ready to play that week, the task at hand. I think if you look too far down the line or if you look back at what just happened, then you lose focus on what you need to do that week to win the game. So will I talk about it? Yeah, I'll talk about it the week of the USC game. Okay. There are a lot of people, Coach, who, are quite, who, who will say, you know, they all want predictions. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other. And I know you don't like getting to predictions, but what's the one element of your football program that you can tell all Bruin fans they know they'll see from your teams? I can tell you a few things. Number one, they'll see a disciplined football team. They'll see a smart 
football team. They'll see a football team that plays hard on every single down. They'll see a team that represents them and that they're proud of when they come to the Rose Bowl to watch us play. They'll see a bunch of players that lay it on the line every down and die to win and love to compete. That's what they'll see. I can't make a prediction on the number of wins we're going to have. Okay? I'm not going to make bold predictions like that. I want our actions on the field to speak for us as we go forward. You know what's the cool thing about it, John? When he was saying that, and I said, what can you guarantee the fans? He looked at him at right. home. And, and he tell had more yeah. than one thing. You got too. that right, that's All for right, sure. Last yeah. thing for you, do yeah. you disdain, the one thing I learned from your dad more than anything else that I uh, repeat I over know. and over again, <laughs> turnovers. He, he, yeah. he used to say to me, John, if you turn over the football, it just kills you. They are the number one critical variable in winning and losing football games is turnovers. It's proven. It doesn't matter if you're playing Pop Warner, high school, college, or in the NFL. The number one critical variable is taking care of the football on offense and taking the ball away on defense. Spoken like a guy yeah. who's had it beat into him since he was since a kid, I, right? Since I was born. <laughs> Daddy, that's I, for sure. Said, taught me how to force the pressure <laughs> at age six months. Yeah. Well, well I, th I think that Dan Guerrero made a wonderful choice. Thank the people you. in Westwood are tremendously